or their data centers and their operations. I mean, that just shows commercial viability. Okay. So that's planting a huge flag in the ground where AI energy could begin to scale on an exponential level into what I think is a $40 trillion opportunity. So, you know, Chris, there's no historical comparison that would match the size of this revolution or, you know, how fast it will take hold. Right, so being an early investor in something of that magnitude could be like getting in on other world-changing technology companies like Microsoft when it IPO'd or, I don't know, being an angel investor in Uber or Facebook where 100,000% type gains came in mere years. That's right, and, you know, I'll say it again. There's no true historical comparison. Okay, so AI energy is going to be more transformative than, than all those companies combined. Yeah. And what I find just as exciting about your research is the fact that these AI boosters, they're being tested in technologies that control some of the world's biggest industries out there. It's not just with these fusion reactors, right? Right. Really, any industry that's currently using AI or plans to will eventually rely on AI boosters like this. Can you give us a little background? I mean, what can we expect to see coming just over the horizon? Sure, I'll give you a quick highlight reel. So okay. we're starting to get a small glimpse of how AI boosters will revolutionize the $3 trillion automotive industry. Okay. Okay. So Mercedes Formula One team, um, they put these boosters to work designing their $15 million race car. So they allowed their supercomputers to double their workflow speed. The result, you know, they, they won the first championship powered by these devices. So my question is, what happens when every automotive manufacturer realizes they have to rely on this technology or, you know, they risk being left in the dust by the competition? There's over 290 million cars on the road in the U.S., so think about the entire world. What happens when all those cars become smart cars and every car needs one? I see your point. Wow. There's going to be a lot of that happening. Yeah. So another example, we can look at the $3.5 trillion financial services industry, and these companies spent boatloads to get data even a nanosecond faster than their competition. Um, so one global bank, Emirates, it's not exactly a household name, uh, but they do have over 200 billion in assets. Uh, this company uh, installed AI boosters and suddenly their processing time went from nearly a minute down to instantaneous. So, I mean, how valuable do you think that kind of boost can be to, to like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, Citigroup, every investment bank and, and fund on Wall Street can need this. Then there's the $1.8 trillion U.S. education system. So you've got the University of Florida, Oregon State, and uh, Notre Dame, to name a few of these. They're using AI boosters for science, research, across all areas like cancer, environmental change, global health. Microsoft already inked their deal for one application of AI boosters. But, you know, how long before they start using them for things like chat? I mean, how long before Amazon, Oracle, and Apple follow suit? Yeah, I, I see your point. So I, I know we understand what held back the development of fusion reactors. You explained that. We now understand how these AI boosters are helping to solve that particular problem. I am curious, what roadblocks stand in the way of speeding up the implementation of this technology? That's a great, yeah, that's a great question. So the current roadblocks are basically cost and time. But as investors, you don't want to get into a new technology that's no longer new. Right? Right. When it's already inside hundreds of millions of different devices, miss the boat too late. Yeah. So like most new technologies, these AI boosters are expensive. And it's going to set you back about $12,500 for one of them. Wow. Uh, but, you know, the price is not going to stop a multi-billion dollar fusion reactor project. But, you know, if you want to add this technology to every cell phone or laptop. Oh, yeah. No way can people afford 13 grand for a cell phone. <laughs> yeah, but, but we've seen this before. The original version of, of Microsoft Word would have run you $1,100 just in first place. The price has since come down 19%. A computer hard drive with uh, 10 megabytes of storage used to run $7,000 just in first place.